Welcome to Divine Path, coming to you from Trust TV. My name is Lilian Ogazi. On this show, we teach Christians how to navigate the world today using the Word of God as their weapon. Well, today we have a very special guest with us, and we're talking about something very interesting that affects you and I one way or another. Do not go anywhere right after the break. We get to meet our guest for the week and our conversation for the week. This day, we'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV. Now today with me, we'll be talking about healing. What do you understand by healing? How, what, how do you see it? You know, how do you apply it to your daily lives? Well, with me today, I have Pastor Ogbe Ada, <laughs> who's going to be teaching us about healing and telling us his healing story. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Ma. It's an honor to have you here with us. An honor to be with you. Ma. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So um, let's just go straight to the point now. Because I believe healing is personal to everybody. Yeah. That's what I see it as. Because you, it's left for you to know how to tap into it, and you know, let God work for you at that point. So, how would you, based on you, how would you, so how do you see healing, or what wow. would you define it as? Okay, um, I won't give you a definition, but the truth is, healing has been a part of my life since I was a kid. It had to be, because I was born SS, uh, sickle cell anemia. I was born anemic. So um, while I was growing up, I, I had to, one way or the other, know how to stay healthy. If not, I'd have died. So um, like I always like to say, most of, my, most of my mates have died that were all born around the same time that I know of because of sickle cell, that had sickle cell anemia. So I had to make a decision in my life whether I wanted to live or not. So healing for me is a life or death situation. Yes, some people, part of, there are some of my family members that never fall sick. I have an elder brother I have never heard since I was born. He's, he's some years older than me, I'm 41. He has never been to the hospital. I've never seen him take drugs. And so you can imagine that he'll be 50 this year in September. So you can imagine that, but for someone like me, I was always sick. I was always falling sick. I could never really play like the other kids. And so I had to take healing as a personal thing for me. So I, I, if I wasn't going to live on drugs, then if there was another way, a better way, mm. I had to learn it and grow in it so that I can stay healthy. So over time, I'd, I'd had to see healing as a personal thing, as something that God has provided for me. And it has been, it has been a journey, right? And it has been a good journey <laughs> because I'm still here. So it has been a good journey. So healing to me is more or less a life or death situation. So at what point did you become conscious? Because you said you've had this as a kid. Yeah. At what point did you realize that, you know what, I think I need to turn to God and let him work wonders with my life and let me be a story or inspiration to other people. Okay, um, my other brother is Reverend Arame Yada and when he got born again and the rest of my other brothers got born again, I got born again at the age of five. So I got born again at the age of five, I got filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of six. And so since then, I have had glimpses of them coming to talk to me about divine healing and how God can heal me and how I can stay healthy by the word of God. I have five elder brothers. All of them are pastors. So, so you can imagine that all of them are pastors. So one way or the other, they have had to talk to me. Yes, they want to see me stay healthy. So they had to pray for me. They had to speak God's word over me. So when I was, when I was let's say 10, 11-ish, I've, I've had to learn enough of God's word at least without the support of other people to know that, okay, do this and do this and do this. God's word said, do this. God's word said, do this. God's word said, do this. And as you do, you will stay healthy. And because um, finishing primary school, entering junior secondary school, I, 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 I had to learn it, you understand? So, um, but when me teaching other people, it was just about two years ago that God actually told me to start using my story to, to talk about healing. Even though it does, I get healed. I, like I said, 
I have gotten healed divine a lot of times. That's why I'm here today. But I've never, I never really stand on stage to tell my testimony because I just feel mm, it has been happening. It has become part of my life. So do, you mind, do you mind sharing a bit of your testimony, moments where you know that this was God that really, you know, wow. came through for you? Wow. There are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot. I have had a lot of experiences over the years. But if you talk about healing, healing comes from God's word. Like we all know, everything comes from God's word. The word that he has given us is Holy Bible. And um, getting healed divinely, number one, you have to know that since it comes from God's word, you have to stay in God's word. So, um, first of all, yes, you can get healed in different ways. I'm going to that. But primarily, since it comes from God's word, you have to take God's word, meditate on it. I remember once... Um, one time I was sick for, I was sick for close to six months. I remember that, I, I remember that much. I was, I was in junior secondary school. And um, there are two events in my life that had been sick for that duration of time. And um, I had to, that time, Reverend had not done, there is this recording of healing scriptures. We had cassettes then. Uh -huh. So some of you don't know cassettes, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> we had cassettes then, I had cassette players. And um, so there was this Ken Hagen healing scriptures that Reverend brought, and it was just healing scriptures all through. So we keep playing them day and night. I can remember, you know, you know these red rechargeable lamps that we had then uh, with cassette players. So once the light goes off, once the light comes on, recharge. And you can imagine listening to script, healing scriptures for months. A time will come, right? It, it becomes part of you. And it becomes part of you. And God's word getting inside you, it heals you. It's, it's an unconscious effort. So you have to make that effort to get God's word inside you. It's like, it's like your heart is pumping. Blood is going around your body. But you have never actually seen the blood. <laughs> you have never actually seen your heart. Even if you do a scan, maybe you have an, a heart issue, that's when you go and do a scan. So it, it's, it's God's word gets inside your spirit, man, and it's the life of your spirit, man. So once that life is in your spirit, man, it flows into your body. So healing manifests in your body. And like I said, it's, there are a lot of instances, but the basic way is you taking God's word. When we go into the other instances, I can give you a testimony. Okay. Let me give you a wow testimony, like they call it. <laughs> there was this time I had osteomyelitis, what they call osteomyelitis. It's a, it's a sickle cell complication, they call it. You have a wound on your bone. So the treatment is you go to the hospital, they tear open the part and leave it open. Then start giving you antibiotics straight to your bone so that the wound will heal. Yeah. yeah. And throughout that period, you only eat goat meat. <laughs> So you can imagine that. I, I like goat meat. Uh, but <laughs> don't worry. I, I met uh, there was there was this uh, pastor friend we had once. She has gone to be with the Lord. She said that when she had it, she had it on her feet. She said that she got tired of goat meat. Uh, you can imagine eating goat meat day and night. So they fried it, they boiled it. Say they did everything. Her parents did everything with goat meat. So I had osteo, I had osteomyelitis. So um, that time Reverend lived in. Um, I was still with him in Abuja here. He lived in somewhere in Charlie Boy Estate. Uh -huh. So one night I was sleeping. Like I said, say, well, just, I was sleeping and I had like a vision, a dream where I was on like a surgery table and I saw like three people over me and, you know, face mask and everything as if it was surgery. So I just opened my eyes. I woke up from the surgery and I opened my eyes and I saw the three of them. And the main doctor, in quote, looked at me and said, don't worry, it was a successful surgery, you are healed and everything. And I knew in my heart it was Jesus. So when I woke up, I just told my mom that, don't worry, the, the osteo is done. And she was like, ah, how do you know? Because we, had, we hadn't gone to the hospital to confirm whether I got all the symptoms. My mom is a nurse. Thank God she's still alive. She took care of me very well and she's still taking care of me. So she just said that this thing might be osteo, but she didn't really want to tell me. So, and we hadn't gone to the hospital to confirm. But after I had that dream, it was like, because I just dozed off out of pains, I just dozed off. 
and then came back. So, so went to the hospital some days later for a checkup. And after we did the x-ray, I can remember instinctively the, the doctor or the technician. It was, but my mom knew him, National Hospital then. He wasn't so tall. And he just came to me and said, ah, your son had osteo. And I was like, eh, hey, so what happened? He said, no, the drugs he has been taking. He's now, he's now fine that they won't have to do the intense, actually, that they won't have to do the intense treatment and everything that, no, the antibiotics he was taking, he's now healed and everything, but that you can still see the scar on the, on the x-ray, on the scan and everything. I said, okay, I said, I told you. So that is a spectacular testimony and it happened only once. But for me to live in perpetual healing, and in living health, like I said, it comes from God's word. So did that at some point, because people will always say, oh, this is what made me believe a lot more. Yeah. This is what made me build, because I know I, it happened, some things happen to people and they tend to probably believe God a lot more. Mm -hmm. I know personally for me, I had moments where, you know, I was me and God, we're not friends. <laughs> so, but eventually I, things happened and I pulled back to God and I realized that things changed for the better. I became, so I, I was like, probably it now made me want to know God more. So mm -hmm. did that make you want to know God more or you were already at a place where you felt you knew him enough? Okay. You can never know God enough, mm -hmm. but the truth is the miraculous, right? Doesn't really drive me. I've seen enough. When it comes to healing, when it comes to healing, I've seen enough of healing coming from God's word on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Maybe at that point, I needed that miraculous healing for that situation, but it didn't really move me. You understand? I've, I've, I've truly, I've had other moments where the power of God was prayed upon me and I was instantly healed. Before this happened when I was probably like, in my 20s, in my mid-20s. And like I told you, I had to start believing God from Five. 8, 9, 10, you understand? So it has been 10, 15 years prior to this time before there was a spectacular miracle. But before then, I've had other instances where God's word has healed me. Now, yeah, miracles are good, but the truth is you, as a person, you want to stay healthy, my advice is take God's word. Okay. Um, I'm going to close you there now before because we're definitely going to go into the words and the scriptures that have helped you yeah. and the words that would help people. We'll get into that right after the break. Now, if you're just joining us, this is um, Divine Part coming to you from Trust TV. We'll be going on a quick break. Don't touch that down. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is Divine Path coming to you from Trust TV. Once again, my name is Lilian Ogazi. And on this episode, we're talking about healing. We have Pastor Ogbe Ada, who has been here telling us his healing story and how he has used God's word, you know, to work for him and heal him throughout his life. Thank you so much for staying with us, sir. Thank you. Now, um, we're talking about God's word. Now, what are those scriptures that, you know, believers who are trusting God for healing? What are those scriptures you want them to hold on to. You made mention of healing scriptures at some point too. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, you know, the Bible says that in Proverbs 4 that God's word is medicine. It's, it, it actually says it's life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. But a reference says that that word health there is medicine. Now, if you have a headache, normal Nigerian person, you take a Panadol, Paracetamol, Panadol, and it's medicine it works on you now what a lot of people and a lot of christians tend to take healing to be is okay you are sick prayer is made pow the next moment you are healed but if you look at the word healing right even in the dictionary healing means restoration so most of the time healing it's most times truly healing is a process even when you have a wound, and it, hey, okay, the wound is healing. I mean, the wound is getting better. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are taking some drugs or you are taking something, or just the normal healing process that your body is built into our bodies. So you are healing, so it's getting better. So when you are taking God's word, when it comes to healing, you should know that God's word is medicine. It's a it's basic truth that you have to know. And while you are reading those scriptures, while you are 
speaking those scriptures, know that you are taking medicine. Yes, like the instance I gave earlier on, it could be miraculous in an instant, but healing is a process. It's restoration. Your body is being restored. So you have to stick with it. Like you have a problem. Maybe you have um, pneumonia. It's a bad disease, but let me just give it. Maybe you have pneumonia. Why I'm giving this is because pneumonia treatment is a long process. Mm -hmm. It takes months sometimes. You have to be on constant antibiotics morning, afternoon, and evening. And if you even take septrin like the one I hate very well, if you take septrin, it's worse. Because a time will come, right? You will sweat it. You will mm. pee it. Yes, you will, you will belge it. Uh -huh. Why? Because it's working on your system. That's the way God's word should be. That's the way scriptures should be. And when you are sick, you go to God's word. Like, okay, internet has even made it very good. When I was growing up, there was no internet. So these days, actually, I've gone online. I have Googled healing scriptures. And there is a lot from okay. different ministers, from different ministries. Like my own pastor, Reverend Aramea, that has healing scriptures. Um, the one I grew up with, Kenneth Ihegen, he has healing scriptures. So these are God's word that was read out or promises, God's promises on healing that in the scriptures that you can take on a daily basis, that you should take on a daily basis. And particularly if you're even sick, you should stick with it. Just stay on it. Like, there are a lot of scriptures. First Peter 2, 24, Isaiah 53, 5. Matthew 8, 17, you understand? There are different scriptures. The Proverbs 4, 20 to 24, I just, I just, I just mentioned about. Now, God's word, when you say God's word, it's medicine. It doesn't necessarily mean, okay, the one that has healing in it. You okay, understand? Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean the one that has healing in it. Now, for us in the New Testament, the truth of the gospel is God's word to us. Romans, 1 Corinthians, is God's word to us. The fulfillment of scriptures in Psalms, what Christ has done, is God's word to us. If you go to Exodus and it's, there's a promise of healing there, hmm? as a New Testament says, I can take that. Why? Because Christ has fulfilled the law for me, according to Romans. Therefore, since Christ has fulfilled the law for me, if there is a promise concerning the children of Israel, that if you fulfill the law, I will heal you. Then I can go to that promise and say, God, Christ has fulfilled this, the law for me. Therefore, I am healed. I am not barren. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, these are scriptures spread all, or promises, let me put it that way, spread all over the Bible. Now, on the other hand, let, let me go this way. Now, on the other hand, they are inspired words. You can read a book or you can be reading Let's say, for example, you carry a book of poems and you start reading. Even as a natural human being, there are words that inspire you. Not all the poems. You understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe depending on, okay, let's leave poem alone, music. I like music a lot. And depending on, on your mood, depending on how you are feeling, you might be feeling sad. There's a song that inspires you for that. Like... They are heartbreak songs. Yeah, when you're experiencing heartbreak, <laughs> you listen to heartbreak songs. Exactly. Who does that to themselves? Exactly. They are the words that, those are the songs that inspire you. Then. When you were happy, hey, you wanted to gyrate, there are songs that inspire you. Now, when it comes to healing, there are a lot of scriptures in the Bible concerning healing. Now, right now, I'm sick. I have a headache. I have typhoid. I have malaria. It has just been confirmed. I did a test. So, how am I going to... Am I going to carry all of God's word? You get me? Now, you can start this way, practical. Let's break it down. You can start this way. You can say, okay, you are sick, but you carry healing scriptures. And you start listening to You start meditating on them. Then God inspires one in you. Now, there's one that I had. Uh, there was another time. The second time I was really, I was really down. I was down for almost a year. And I was listening to Reverend Rabiada's healing scriptures. And I, like I said, play them day and night. He just keeps playing. But a time came, Acts 9 has a scripture there where Peter met someone called Aeneas that was on a deathbed. And he spoke a word said that Aeneas, Jesus Christ, make it the whole. Now rise up. Now, that word was quickening me. That word was inspired in me. 
Now, why I'm using this word is because, like I said, even as a natural human being, there are, there are things that inspires, are inspired yeah. in you at a certain time. So talk more of us as spiritual beings. So it was inspired in me. And at that point, what you have to do is just take that word and start speaking it. And I just started speaking, Jesus Christ, make me whole. Yes, I continue listening to the healing scriptures, but that is the one that was inspired in me at that time. Okay, now as that one, no, I, I had an experience one time. I think I spoke about it in church where I came into church and I was feeling sick. And the first thing I did was ask for Pastor Mola at the entrance of the church. And my husband yeah. said, you are in the house of God and you're looking for Pastor Mola. You can look for Pastor Mola so in like, the house of okay. God. Okay. <laughs> and then we moved on. Eventually, I had, I think, um, the resident mama and um, um, Pastor Duke Bear, they came and prayed for me and told me, you're healed. I said, okay, do you call Pastor Mola? I said, ask them for Pastor Mola. So at that point, I felt like I didn't get my healing because I had doubt. Because I didn't, uh, uh, even after the prayers and told me you're healed. So what happens when, like you said, it's not instant. It's not, oh, this and this happens. You have to keep trusting God and declaring those words over yourself. Did you ever have moments where you felt like these scriptures are not working? Or I think like, okay, maybe God has left me today. Let me just wait till tomorrow and see. Of course, I'm a human being. And then what did you do? That's the thing. You go back to God's word. You know, the only cure for doubt is God's word. Doubt is the opposite of belief. You understand? Now, believing is you taking God's word for what it is. That's summary of faith. Okay. You taking God's word. Okay, you told me to come here by 10 for this session. And because I believed you, some few minutes to 10, I ping you, I'm on my way. Why? Because you said 10. I believed you. If if I didn't believe you, I'd have probably been still been at home or in the office because my office was on by 10. Still be in the office and you that like, where are you? Uh, I said 10 now. <laughs> that means I doubted you. Now, doubt it's doubt is of the mind. Believe is of the heart. Now, when I say heart, I mean your spirit, man, the core of your being. You, you, you might say, hey, but doubt, hey, I'm doubting God's word. Yes, situations, physical situations, especially sickness. Why? Because you can feel it in your body. Sometimes it can bring doubt to your mind and say, are you sure this thing is working? Are you sure this thing is working? Are you sure God's word is coming to pass mm -hmm. at this point? But all you have to do to take away the doubt is to take more of God's word. Do you know that when you have a symptom, let's say it started as a headache and you start taking paracetamol, just because the headache persists, you don't stop taking the paracetamol and you say, ah, this paracetamol is not working mm -hmm. and you throw it away. Probably what do you do? You get a higher analgesic. You understand? You get maybe parando extra mm -hmm. <laughs> and you up your dosage. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Okay. Up your dosage on God's, on God's word. word. Okay, so finally, now, what's your word out there to believers who are trusting God for healing? Stick with God. Like I told you earlier on, I'm 41. I, on my deathbed, there is a lot of time I've been on my deathbed. People look at me and say, ah, they don't survive past 20. You can you imagine someone sick and you're telling you, I, was, I think I was 18 then. They say, ah, they don't survive past 20. And... I've heard all manner of things, but stick with God's word. Okay. Don't stick with the, yes, miracles do happen, but it's no miracles that guarantee God's word. It's God's word that guarantee miracles. So you stick with God's word. You take it day and night. You stick with it. Hands are laid upon you. Go back again. Let hands be laid upon you again. And just stay with God's word. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for this insightful um, episode. Thank you. Man. It's an honor having you here once it's again. It's an honor being here too. To you who's just joining us, unfortunately, we've come to the end of this episode of Divine Path. And to you who have been listening and watching, I hope you've been able to learn something. Like he said, always stick with God's word and you will see it work wonders in your life. Having said that, we've come to the end of this episode of Divine Path. My name is Lilian Ogazi. Do well to follow us on all our social media platforms streaming on your screen right now. And if you have questions, send them and we'll be happy to respond. See you again, same station, same time next week. Have a lovely day ahead.